A master document is basically nothing more than just a one document that has other documents inserted within that main or master document. Although it's oversimplifying it a bit, it certainly is an understatement of the usefulness of a master document. The main feature or the usefulness of the master document is being able to be linked to all those other sub-documents. So putting it into a perspective, let's say you have a bunch of people working on news stories out there, and instead of opening up every one of their documents, how about if you just inserted them all into one? and not only have them inserted into one but being linked so you can track the progress of their document or their story that they work on within one document here and make changes within your document or suggestions that will automatically update their document and vice versa. So there's a lot of collaboration that can go on between these two documents here which makes it pretty useful. So to get started I've got my document here too. I first want to save it so I'll click on the save button. Save it to the desktop. We'll call it the master and then click Save. Now I'm ready to go ahead and start inserting all these other documents in my master document. And to get started, I want to go to the View tab, come over here to the Document Views, and click on the Outline View. In the Outline View here, I want to click on the Show Documents to reveal more fields here. And the field I'm looking at is Inserting a Subdocument. And you can see right there, it gives a little bit of brief explanation. But I'm going to go ahead and click on Insert, browse through my computer, starting on the desktop to my Exercise folder and finding stories that I like to keep track of. Maybe somebody's working on some lyrics for Phil Collins and then click on insert again, come over here and double click on XTC lyrics and you can see every time I, I add documents, it adds it below the previous one and it keeps building up within my document here, my master document. So as I scroll up you can see that they're sectioned off basically by these gray little borders here. So this one, let's say Billy's working on it, maybe Sue's working on this one up above here. Any changes that I make within these inserted subdocuments are automatically linked. Well, how do I know that they're linked? Well, two ways. First of all, up in the master document group, you only get an unlink option. You don't get a link option because by default it's automatically linked. So let me scroll to the top and we're looking at these Phil Collins lyrics. What if I said talk to me and I wanted to add and everybody. Well, the moment that uh, Sue's working on this document opens it up, she'll now see this. Let me prove it to you. See this little icon over here? When I double click on that, it automatically opens up that document and you can see what I just added here. It adds it in a different type of format or font here so it, it is trackable here. If you don't get that tracking and it adds the same text so all of a sudden Sue's opening it up and going, oh my gosh, my, my document's haunted. It's like things are being added, deleted, removed. Well, you don't want to scare Sue. So instead, and maybe she comes in here and deletes it and then saves it, you can see it automatically updates in yours. But out of courtesy, what I recommend doing is coming to the Review tab and clicking on your track changes. So, you know, any changes that you make will keep track of it in red. And that includes anything that you're deleting too. So, again, when Sue opens up her document, we'll go ahead and save this here. Then she'll be able to see those changes, of course. I'm going to unselect that. Let's go ahead and double click and open it up. See, now she can hover over it and go, oh, it's not a ghost. It's just Kurt there. There's a little pop-up uh, when he made the change. Well, I don't like those changes, so I'm going to click before it, go to my review tab. And if this is all new to you, you want to watch the uh, tracking changes video there. Otherwise, uh, this is just for the, the benefits of using a master document where they're both linked. But she can come in here and go ahead and click. Let me go to the next change. I reject Kurt's change and I reject that change and then I click OK when I'm done and I save my work. So when she's done close out it automatically updates in mine and shows that she just didn't like what I have told her or what I suggested here in changes. So now that I jumped outside of the outlining tab here I can come back to it and go ahead and continue on. The other thing you can do is you can collapse all your documents that you inserted. Click on it. They collapse and they collapse in just to an address link here so it tells you exactly where that document can be found on the computer or if it's on a server it will have you know the address going out all the way out to that server address you know maybe it's letter S and then the address and you can also control click and it opens up the document so there's more than one way to open up the document that somebody's working on or the sub document in this case when we're referring to the master document here and by default you can see that it's locked because we can't make any changes here can we so it's locking it down um, the only way we can make changes is if we expand the uh, sub documents again then we can go ahead and start typing and doing whatever we would like that's basically it there's a few more other items of interest I like to show you you can actually lock the document when you lock it that means that nobody can make changes including you so if you try to delete something forget it 
scrolling back up if uh, Sue opens up her document and I'm going to open it up for my master document but if she opens up hers and she makes changes well she can make changes however when she tries to save it notice up here in the title bar it says read only it also affects her document so now Sue when she clicks save it forces her to create or save it as a new document because this document now is read only so she can't do anything well that's a great April Fool's joke or if you just really like the original document and any future changes you want her to make to force her to save it and maybe call this, you know, Phil Collins lyrics B, C, or number two, three, or four, then save that and continue on. In any case, I'll close out of here and don't save it because I can't, and then remove the lock. If you wanted to, you can create subdocuments instead of inserting them. What that means is basically if the document isn't out there for you to insert, but you want to create one, well, you can either go outside and create a new document and then just save it, then insert it later, or you can stay in here, come down to the bottom here, click at the end, and go ahead and click Create New Document. It opens it up so when I type, what it's going to do is when I click save, of course I can come down here and add some body text. In any case, I'm actually creating a new document, a subdocument, because when I click save, it's going to automatically add this to my desktop with the title when I type. Kind of crazy, huh? Well, if you want to find out where it's at, like if you're not sure if it's on your desktop, just go ahead and collapse the documents and look, there's the address. It says it's on my desktop. Well, let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this, and there it is when I type. It's pretty cool. All right. So back up here, I'm going to go ahead and expand the documents, show you the next feature, which is called the split. You can hover over it to read more about it, but you can split a subdocument content into separate documents. It just depends on what your point of insertion will be. So if I want to split it right here, because when you click in here, I can't split it within a paragraph. See, it doesn't give me that option. But if I want to split it between paragraphs here, I can go ahead and click on split. Now it's split, so what that means is that I've got two different documents now. So if I double click on this one, see it opens it up. It's the, the Collins lyrics, so that stays in the main document. I'll close out of that. Then I double click on this one, and it's document three. It hasn't been saved yet, and when it saves, it'll save it as no reply here. Close out of it, and the reason why it hasn't saved yet, because I haven't clicked on my save button, and I can still undo that. Pretty cool. All right. Okay, what about uh, merging two documents into one? So, for example, I got this document, scrolling down, and I got this subdocument. If I both want them into one, then all I have to do is come up here, click on the first one, and then holding down the shift key, click on the second one here, and I get my merge option. Click on merge, and it merges those two together. So, all I have to do is come up here and double click on this to open up the file, and it's in the Collins lyrics, but what happened to the XTC lyrics? close out of here. Let's do a hunt. I'll go ahead and save this, minimize, come into my exercise folder. Hey, my XC, XTC lyrics are still there. So it doesn't delete the document, it just removes it from your master document and just merges it all into, well, in this case, one document here in, when I double click on this, into the Collins lyrics. See, there's Collins up at the top down below, then it merged the uh, XTC lyrics. So doesn't delete it, so you're safe there. just actually merges them together both within your uh, master document and what you get in here will also affect, except for deletions of course, in your other documents when you merge the two together. And then of course when you're done with your outline view you can close it or you can zip around to other tabs here, but your outlining view will always remain open. So don't think that when you come over here and start working on other stuff that it's closed and that you have to go back to the view because the outline is still open. So instead of clicking on this again, you can just go right to the outlining tab and then click close it removes that tab from your ribbon and if you want to go back to it then of course you have to go back to the view and click on outline again thanks for watching hey as a quick reminder if you like my video please give it a thumbs up you can also click on me and subscribe to my channel get notified of the latest videos and for only two dollars a month you can have access to all my microsoft office training videos